sailing around the world on a budget means you need to become a DIY guy. Look at this poor guy. I mean, how much can a koala bear? Check that. I think it's ready. Yeah. Not a bad pork chop, is it? Is it more of a pork steak? Hey guys. Hi guys. We're coming to you from Isla Mujeres. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, had a fairly lazy week actually. I guess it involved wrapping up our uh, our guests on board couple of little boat projects but I'm really really been lazy um, just trying to stay off the old tootsies they're um, coming along okay and thank you very much to uh, the advice from some of our patrons uh, one particular guy is an ER doctor mm -hmm. and he verified that what I was doing is about all that should be done so all I'm doing is taping it up next to the good toe I guess it's got to stay like that for a month or six weeks or so. <laughs> anyway, uh, jobs that need to be done include fix the bloody sewing machine so I can fix the sewing things that we need to do, including the boom bag and trampoline. Trampoline, and we've seats. got to do. We've got to make a new seat uh, cockpit seat or just seat cover. Haven't decided yet. When I bought this, I actually bought this one as refurbished and it was very cheap, $370 US. And uh, I was very happy with that. I bought the fancy box from Sailrite so that it would have a nice box. That's $220 or something, this box. So the box was almost as much as the machine. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted a nice box. So. The machine worked fine. We did a, a job uh, stitching the trampolines, repairing the trampolines, and uh, that's sort of heavy duty work. Anyway, afterwards, I sort of had to tinker with things, and for some reason, the timing went out on the machine, and I have no clue how to get it back. Now, Sailrite have fantastic videos on maintaining your machine, including the timing. Uh, so really check those out, they're invaluable. So the problem I had with timing, inside where the bobbin sits here. So the bobbin, the bobbin holds the lower thread. Inside that mechanism is the driver. That is a driver. And I guess that's the drive axle. Sounds like a truck, doesn't it? But anyway, that's the driver. This is the hook, which sits like so. And the driver just turns the hook back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like that as you stitch. This hook has to pick up the top thread. It takes it away, it takes it around like that, and then the thread falls off. And that's how a stitch is made. Now, there is a loop from the top thread. This hook has to be rotated far enough anti-clockwise to then catch that loop of thread. My machine was not doing that anymore. I don't know 
if it was because of the heavy work that I did on the trampoline material, which is a Ferrari mesh, uh, it's uh, really heavy, or because I was tinkering and I've adjusted something that I, and I don't know how to get it back. I tried for days to get the timing right. So this driver was not rotating far enough anti-clockwise. I sent a video of this to uh, Reliable and they said, you are correct. The driver is not rotating far enough anti-clockwise. We'll send you, ah, send it back for warranty. We are no longer in the US. So um, to send it back to the US, it's actually Canada. I think it's Ontario somewhere. Um, would have been hugely expensive. So uh, I, I said, hey, it's gonna, you know, how about you send me the parts I need and I'll, I can replace it. So they sent me a new driver. I looked at it and went, it's no different. I put the new driver in, no different. Still would not pick up a thread. Uh, so my next option was to send it back for warranty. And I'm sure they would have fixed it. They would have tweaked something, adjusted something. Anyway, Sailrite have solved that problem. It's obviously a fairly common problem with these machines. They have, this instead of this being a pin, they have grub screws. What I wanted to be able to do is put the Sailrite part on. So this is the driver from Sailrite. But instead of using a pin, they have grub screws so that you can adjust the timing just by loosening grub screw, rotating a bit, tightening it up. So that's what I wanted to put on here, but would you believe I cannot get this pin out? We've got a vice set up here. I've tried hammering, I've tried heating. Can't get the bloody thing out. So I think I'm gonna cut this off with a grinder. Be careful not to damage the axle itself, but I'm gonna cut the driver off so that I can put the new axle on. Customer service, not so good. I contacted them about the driver timing issue um, and when they did not answer after two or three emails I called them and suddenly they gave me some attention and I was able to get a email through to the engineer to ask those questions and he the engineer replied fairly promptly and said he would send out replacement parts since then, I've installed those replacement parts and the, the problem persisted. The, the, the timing was still out. Um, since then, it's been at least two weeks since the engineer wrote an internal email to customer service saying, please process this warranty. Customer service has not contacted me. I get the occasional, uh, I'm not sure how often it is, maybe every week, automated email saying we hope you have been satisfied with our customer service if you do not reply we'll assume that it's complete and I reply and I say still waiting for customer service still no reply for the warranty claim I'm sure if I called them I would get the attention and it would be processed however I fixed my machine using a Sailrite driver which is adjustable so I don't want to claim warranty anymore, but I'm just waiting to see how long it takes them to respond. Are you the doctor now? I am the doctor. <laughs> it's to stop my toes growing together. <laughs> just want a tiny piece of paper, basically, but not paper, cotton. You think you still need that? Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't sit straight still. Mm. 
Cool. So these seats are, you know, they're made in China, but they're, as everything is, but they're, uh, you know, 300 each to replace, to buy new ones. Um, when we were in the States, we were looking at options then also, because we knew these were not going to last. And uh, Defender had an option, a double seat, same design as this, called the Springfield. Um, but, but double. We thought that'd be better, and the price wasn't bad. It was like four fifty for the double. But then the freight was two hundred, so uh, we didn't get it. And it seemed to be out of stock in West Marine, where the, you know maybe we could have got it transferred to a West Marine store, but they were out of stock. So. Anyway, for us, on our budget. We got to fix instead of replace. So the problem with this base is it's cracked, yeah, but it's only a, it's not not a huge crack. But we definitely can't use that for the armrest support anymore. So I think we'll rotate the base. Uh, we'll cut it off to make it square. Put the armrest supports here on the fresh. Uh, polyethylene and see if we can get another few years out of these they're not the most comfortable seats but that's certainly the simplest solution nuts wing nuts in in the base again this is not what came with it but this is all I could come up with the last time that we redid these seats just sort of glue them in it's not not ideal but it's better than nothing These are the uh, these are the nuts we really want. These ones are berry, but we can't buy those here, as far as I know. Well, we can't find them anywhere. So these were recovered back in South Africa by a professional upholsterer, and they were breaking up within a couple of months. Uh, so this, these were done, what, a year and... No, nah, two years ago. So it lasted two years, this upholstery. Didn't last that long, as I say. They were ripping open in about two months. But the one thing, the first thing we asked the guy was, this here is stapled, the base. And, and it's pulled tight on the foam with staples underneath this cover plate. And the first thing we said is, do you have stainless steel staples? He says, I can get them. Said, Good, get them. These are all rusted out. They're not stainless steel. <laughs> <laughs> Another extreme cost saving that you can make is if you DIY your maintenance. DIY everything. Do it yourself. You know, I mean, when you look at wages that I've noticed in boat yards, um, you know, can be somewhere between 50 and 100 US dollars an hour. That's just not within my budget. So I do everything myself. I'm sure a job will come along which I can't do and I have to hire some professional. Um, but you know what, I've been burnt in the early days, probably, what was this, 20 years ago? I've been burnt by hiring professionals. There's a lot of professionals in boating, in yachting. And, you know, a lot of guys that don't know what they're doing, but they tell you that they know what they're doing and they stuff it up, cost you more, or they rip you off in some way. 
don't do a good job. Um, so that's why I originally got into doing everything myself. Because if you're going to f*** it up, you may as well f*** it up yourself. And learn from it. And then, you know, you can do it next time. I'll go on the trampoline to get these out. Another one, because the rust will go everywhere in here. This was the best of the uh, covers. The least torn and ripped up, so I'm taking it apart so that I can use each panel as a pattern for the new ones. And I'm, so far, the seat base, I'm glad to find out that looks fairly simple. I, I was sort of stressing about it would be complicated, but it, it looks okay. I think I can do it. Tell you, there's been lots of swearing, <laughs> but the trouble with this machine, and this is the same as the sail ride, is the foot clearance is so small. They claim it's 10 millimeter, but it's not. Um, so I've had to adjust this. Uh, I guess you call it the upper feed dog. I've lifted it up because the. The fabric I'm sewing here is, you know, four or five mils thick. Um, and just trying to, and plus there's a, the cord inside the piping here. And trying to get that under the foot is just crazy hard. But I think I've worked out a compromise now. And it seems to be doing okay. It's obviously a technique thing too, of which I have none. Because beginners don't tend to have techniques. But I gotta say, the sale right uh, YouTube videos are excellent. And yeah, in, especially in setting the machine up as well. Um, you know, when I finally got this thing tuned. Um, yeah, excellent explanations there from Sailroad. Hey, why don't you sponsor us? It's okay, we got this one. We're fine. Don't worry, don't worry about it. It's fine, it's fine. Should be finished. One. Base. There's a whole lot of others. Another base and two headrests to go, but let's have a look. It's like opening a Christmas present because, like, you're doing the reverse side and then you got to unwrap it. Oh, pretty. Huh? Mm-hmm. Pretty bee. 
pull this tongue. Mm -hmm. And you glue it down there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I can't get the right glue for HDPE, high density polyethylene, and it's very slippery stuff. In fact, they use it on boat trailers to um, slide the boat on and off. So, uh, I'm just using epoxy, and actually this is really old epoxy glue, so hopefully it still works. I used epoxy last time as well, and it it's not very good. It's not going to stick very well, but I'm trying to build up a, you know, a strong epoxy base here to hold these nuts in place so they don't turn. That's the idea. Something like that. <laughs> See if that'll work. So I have 16 of these to do. So back to finishing the seat. So I had to, um, these wing nuts, the original fittings had rusted out. So I had to glue these wing nuts in again i'd already done this before in south africa and the and the epoxy just doesn't stick to the polyethylene it's um you need a special type of super glue like a two-part super glue for polyethylene and of course we can't get that here <laughs> so i've tried epoxy again and i just sort of built up around the wings of the wing nuts and it seems pretty tight it seems pretty good so now we can put the bases on. So all it means really is uh, pulling the upholstery tight and then we're going to use tacks, upholstery tacks, to um, nail it down. And then we have a, uh, over that, put a, a nice cover. But you know what? We ran out of vinyl. That's the only bit I got left. <laughs> so. So I think we'll end up having to use Sunbrella, which will make it uh, that color on the bottom. But that's okay. That's okay. So we're thinking about starting to plan where we're heading next. It's likely to be Panama. Um, go check in, get a cruising permit, and then up to San Blas Islands, which is very remote, but it's also very popular. Uh, <laughs> we know lots of cruisers there right now and in fact 
a bunch of YouTube channels are right there, right now. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't really want to add to the crowd. But anyway, that's probably our plan. So we're going to have to provision because there's no shops um, at Linton Bay where we check in. There's a marina there and I think we can check in there. But there's no supermarkets. So we need to provision for a couple of weeks and then start the three-day process here of checking out. Maybe we can do it in two, hopefully. And then wait for a weather window. So our routing is not direct because that goes too close to the, the horn of Nicaragua and I think it's Honduras there. Um, and it's a, at lately, I don't know for how long, but lately there's been quite a few pirate activity going on there. Um, they come up to you in high-speed fishing boats and uh, hold you at gunpoint or knife point and take everything off your boat. So far no one's been injured because um, they give up everything. But we don't want any of that. So we're going to have to go a long way off that coast. Now people have said 150 miles minimum off that coast because these are just normal fishermen that see an opportunity and have their weapons a uh, very poor part of the world apparently so they take um, so we're basically going to track from here we're going to track east I think I've decided sort of within about 12 miles the economical border of Jamaica and then we're going to go straight south so it's almost doubling our passage distance but it's the safest option so we need a northerly wind so we're gonna to have to wait for a northerly they come once every sort of 10 days here so we'll wait until that happens and then we're gonna track east under that northerly and by the time the northerly swings back to the normal easterly we'll be heading south so that's the plan Covered up, yeah. but uh, yeah, happy with that. <laughs> you know, it's a good life when your shaving can rusts out before it's empty. It's probably two years old, I think, but finally empty. The only reason these days that I shave is so that my mask seals nicely, or because it gets bloody itchy. Good life. So how are we going to leave this lovely vinyl sitting out in the sun? I made a cover. So that's the next thing. It's nearly finished, so just got to put Velcro on it, and that's it. Yeah. 